Have you ever seen a lovely panning shot of old school RuneScape like this and thought, God damn it, I wish I had the Orb of Oculus? Well, this wasn't recorded using the Orb of Oculus. It was recorded using a RuneLite plugin, and not only a RuneLite plugin, but one which comes default with the RuneLite client. This is the detached camera feature, which is a part of the hidden RuneLite developer tools. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to unlock these tools very easily. It's remarkably easy, in fact, and then show you what a couple of them can do. So first things first, how to unlock the developer tools. All you need to do is go to your room like shortcut, right click it and go to properties. And then in the target section, add hyphen hyphen client args space, and then in quotes, hyphen hyphen developer hyphen mode. You can find this in the description to copy and paste and then just apply an okay and you're good. The developer tools are now unlocked on your client. Now, if when you go to open the client, it doesn't open up, don't worry. The same thing happened to me on my computer, even though I had this working fine on my laptop. Now I figured out that this only works on more recent installations of RuneLite and that the auto updater doesn't update everything. So if you just go to the RuneLite website, download the installer and run it again, I didn't even need to uninstall the old version of RuneLite, then your client should open up just fine. So once you have the client open, you're logged in and you have the developer tools open, you can start playing around. All of the tools are very simple. You just toggle them on or toggle them off. A couple of them have pop-up windows, but for the most part, it's just toggled on, toggled off, and they'll just give you various bits of information about the game around you. Things like players, NPCs, ground items, ground objects, game objects. There's a tool for all of them and you can pretty much just highlight them. That's about all it does. So you're not gonna get very much out of these tools in your day-to-day -day gameplay. There are a couple in there which might have some kind of use. I was thinking about trying out the interacting tool, which shows which NPCs and players are interacting interacting with each other as sort of an instant warning if someone goes to attack me at the Rev Caves. So I'm here at Rev Caves, I've got a skull, got a budget set up, and uh, yeah, I've got interacting on. So I've been thinking about this. I'm not really sure how good it's going to be because there, there is the benefit that interacting doesn't mean attacking. So you'll be able to see if they've clicked on you, I think instantly. They don't actually have to hit you for the arrow to appear. Bruh, I'm getting some sick loot. Did that just attack me? I think he did. Plus, <laughs> he really wants the D plate legs. You're not getting my D plate legs, mate. He tried to steal my kill. Get out. Okay, so it didn't work. <laughs> the detached camera tool is extremely self-explanatory and it is very, very useful. Of course, the Orb of Oculus is not fully released right now. It's only available to a few people with a flag on their account. But the detached camera tool in RuneLite works pretty much exactly the same way. W, A, S, and D to move, R and F to go up and down, and you can hold shift to make your movement slower. Now there are a couple of features missing from the detached camera thing in RuneLite, such as the ability to hide your interface, as well as the ability to use page up and page down in order to change the speed at which the camera moves. I haven't looked into the code of the plugin at all, so maybe those things do exist and I wasn't able to find them when I was just messing about with it. But those features definitely exist on the orb and would be very useful in this detached camera tool as well. But on the flip side of that, there's actually one feature which the detached camera tool does have, which the orb of Oculus doesn't, which is the ability to zoom in and out while you're using it. And that is one of the most frustrating things when using the orb of Oculus is the fact you have to cancel out of it. Maybe you've got a great shot and you wanted to change it up just a little bit. Well, instead of just being able to zoom in or zoom out, you have to press escape, close it out, then go back into the orb, reposition the camera and start it all over again. Also, if you log out while you're using the orb, when you log back in, your character will have render self disabled. So you'll have to type it out to get your character visible again. Really minor gripe. The detached camera tool is slightly different in that it doesn't even hide your character. So you would need to do it manually either way. So it's not a one for one clone of the orb of Oculus, but it is unbelievably close. And honestly, if you don't have the orb of Oculus and you wanna make videos with it, which I know there are a lot of people out there that have just been waiting with bated breath for the orb to come out. The detached camera tool is definitely good enough to get you through until they officially release the orb. The detached camera tool really can't be abused in any way. When you have it open, you can still move your character around by clicking on the ground or on the minimap, but you can't interact with anything. Also, if you're thinking, the first thing I'm gonna do with this is go to the rev caves and scout caves without going into it. Uh, no, unfortunately, that's not gonna work either. Your client will only load out the people around you and even if you move your camera miles away from where your character is, it's not going to show you any additional information. Now the widget inspector tool is one which is again pretty useless for most people, but I have a lot of fun with it. In fact, with the widget inspector tool, I uh, was able to make a plugin to give Soup his hardcore Iron Man status back and he then went live with it and uh, told everyone that Jagex had restored it because they felt bad for him. Talking to some of the Jmods, and they have very graciously given me my hardcore status back. This isn't a joke, no overlay. Let's see, look, I'm typing. 
It's like it's like legit. It's in the uh, in the CC and everything. So I think I'm the first person to actually be given status back as a hardcore. I'm just kidding. It's a plugin. <laughs> <laughs> Soup troll. <laughs> in fact, I was able to make a plugin which changes my character name everywhere, and you can change it to whatever you want. You can't do this with the widget inspector alone, of course. I had to actually go and write a plugin, but I wouldn't have been able to do that without the widget inspector tool. The widget inspector shows you a bunch of information about the sprites displayed on screen. Now, as far as I'm aware, that just includes text and sprites. So one thing you can do with that is edit on screen text. So you can change the title in a pop-up window, or you can change chat messages you've sent or received. You can also change the size of various sprites on screen, as well as the sprite that it is actually displaying. In fact, I had a little bit of fun with that back in the day when I first found RuneLight and was going through all the different sprites. And I ended up finding a bunch of mobile placeholder images, which Jed had made in paint. And while he was waiting on the art team to finish the actual versions which would go in game, he had these fake horrific paint drawings in the game. And anyone who could be bothered to go and trawl through the sprites would see these terrible, terrible paint images. So as I'm editing this, I'm realizing that someone actually found one of these images that I'm talking about and posted it to Reddit. So this is one of the images that Jed made as a placeholder while making mobile that ended up in the game discoverable by players. Further to that, some Reddit detective actually found out in the Reddit thread that ModWolf had posted a tweet out when Jed was making them. Uh, so this is how people figured out how they ended up in game. Now, obviously it's Jed, so everyone's going to assume this is something nefarious, but no, it's just using them as placeholders. Chill your beans, all right? Like I said before, there's nothing that you can really do with this. Maybe you want to prank your friend by saying that Mod Archie PM'd you or something, but for the most part, it's pretty useless. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you get some use out of this. And if you're interested in more RuneLight related content, then let me know, because I love the client and I love the community around it. I think it's really impressive what they've been able to do over the past year. But anyway, that's all for today, guys. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.